So, Jonathan Martin, there's yes. no, no mystery here, right? I mean, this is Michigan, this is Wisconsin, this is Pennsylvania. We know, you know, the... We've seen the movie. Georgia, they're going to be fighting. It looks like it's yeah. trending a little Trump's way, but there'll yeah. be a fight. Biden won last time. But we know where this race is going to be decided, and we've got an eight-month road to get there. <sighs> Strap in. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's it's predictable uh, where it's going to be fought. What's less predictable, obviously, are sort of the contours of the race. But look, I think Arizona and Georgia were probably the, the biggest surprises for Biden four years ago. Yeah. I think it's going to be tough to... I think for him to hold on this time around uh, in both states. Uh, Pennsylvania, of the three Great Lakes states, probably the best one for, for Biden right now. Michigan and Wisconsin, a bit tougher. Uh, but I think that's where the action is mostly, are those three Great Lakes states. Biden holds on there, and he wins. He loses those three states, or you know any one of them, and Trump probably wins. I don't think it's more complicated than that, Willie. Yeah, there's not much of a path for the president otherwise, uh, and, and certainly a reflection of a campaign's priorities is the candidate's time. Exactly. And he was in Pennsylvania over the weekend. He's visited Pennsylvania by far more than any other state, a few times, yeah, other yeah. than other than, than <laughs> Delaware, of course. Uh, and he heads to Wisconsin and Michigan right. today, uh, a two a two day swing. Um, looking at and Steve did a good job laying out the map there. The one there is one state though Democrats think they can flip. They acknowledge yeah. Arizona's going to be harder this time. Georgia going to be harder. Some worries about Nevada, too. Yeah. Uh, North Carolina, though. Yeah. North Carolina, a state where abortion rights going to be on the ballot, and now the Republicans have also nominated a conspiracy theorist and yeah. a Holocaust denier for governor. Yes, so much of this is just pure demography, right? You tell me the demographics of a certain state, a certain zip code even, I can probably tell you who's going to win. And that gets to the heart of that split between Nevada and North Carolina. Nevada, much more working class, uh, dramatically fewer college-educated voters in Nevada. There's not a big kind of upscale suburb uh, in Las Vegas. Very different in North Carolina because you have two population centers in Charlotte and Raleigh with a ton of college-educated voters who historically were kind of Bush Republicans who are now up for grabs. And I think that's why the Biden folks feel a little better about North Carolina and a little more concerned about Nevada. So Georgia, North Carolina, Michigan, certainly Detroit. What's going on with the Democrats and the black vote? I think it's more of a gender issue than it is a racial issue. I think Democrats have a profound challenge with, with men of, of all races, and especially working class men. And it, it, it's not just working class white men. I think they have a problem with working class African Americans and Hispanics. And I Why? Think, Why? I, I think part of it is just pure cultural politics. They, you know, men tend to be more instinctually conservative, regardless of race. And they see a sort of Democratic Party that and culture has drifted left. and. They're more gettable because of that. But let's be clear, this is a margins game. This is not a sort of a huge, but margins matter in this election. And if 5% of black men in Milwaukee or Detroit stay home or vote for, for RFK Jr., that's a profound threat to Biden. And you know, RFK Jr. now potentially with Aaron Rodgers as his running mate. Yes, we're so going to talk more about that. Wisconsin for grabs. We're, so. we're going <laughs> to talk more about that. Yes, Aaron Rodgers on the short list to wow. be vice president. An active NFL player, by the way. I'll believe Robert, I say it. Yeah. 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 Only the Jets. <laughs> Only so, the Jets. Something interesting in Georgia last night, we said it might be trending a little bit yeah. Trump's way. There was a poll that had them within the margin of error. It would be close. Yeah. But it was interesting to watch last night, particularly what you're talking about, yeah. these college-educated yes. Republicans. A lot of them still went for Nikki Haley last night. I mean, yeah. she, she stole about 70,000 protest votes. Donald Trump won by, we all know the number, it's just the, under yeah. 12,000 last time. Yeah. That would be an interesting group to they're watch. They're trying to force feed the pill to the dog, and the dog won't take the pill, Will. And it's like, guys, the primary is over. She's dropped out of the race. They still won't take the damn pill, right? <laughs> and I think that gets yeah. to the heart of Trump's challenges that places like Cobb County, uh, which, you know, were once the beating heart of the realignment in the 70s and 80s from Democrats to the GOP, have now flipped back. This is Newt's old district. Uh, and they, they simply uh, don't want to vote for the Trump version of the, the GOP. Not sure that they're sold yet on Biden, but they're still gettable. No question about it. Yeah. And finally, the one other aspect that we can talk about later is how his legal cases impact the election moving ahead. Now that it's started in earnest, the judge uh, in the E. Jean Carroll case approved like ninety one million dollars uh, that Trump put down for his appeal. Um, did he defame her again? Will there be another civil no. defamation trial? And also, he should be in court in two weeks for the. Uh, porn star hush money case, and I believe if if his delay effort doesn't work, Donald Trump has to be in court for that, hearing all the details of the case against him coming out. It'll be interesting to see how that plays into all of this. And